Hey everyone, this is Pixie Britt, and I'm going to show you in the next couple of minutes how you can embed Automation Anywhere Copilot on any web page so you can run your processes and fetch information from wherever you need quickly without interrupting your current workflow. Ready to go? Let's dive in. First of all, we have this text automate uh, this text tutorial that kind of walks you through the different steps. So if you want to see the screenshots and the visuals, head over here. I'll include the link to this in the description. But um, I'm actually going to walk you through this. So you don't need to worry about that at this second. But what we're going to do is together we're going to build something that uh, scrapes data from a page. Let's say, for instance, we're using this refund portal, right? And we have people chatting us and they have issues. We want to scrape their name, their information, and then go past that to um, an Automation Anywhere process to return their order. So without leaving the page, I can quickly see what has this person ordered and what is it compared to what they're actually saying. And I'll also get it to kind of pre-populate some information on this page. So to do this, we're first of all going to start by adding a button. So to do that, you're going to open the Pixie Bricks page editor. Just right click anywhere on the page, click inspect. And if your dock shows up over here on the side, click these three dots here and move your dock to the bottom. That's the easiest way to navigate with Pixie Bricks. Uh, next, you're going to actually click this Pixie Bricks tab on here, and that's going to bring you to our page editor, and this is where you build with Pixie Bricks. So once you're in the page editor, this is where you can add and uh, edit items on the screen. So for instance, I'm going to click this Add button, and I'm going to be able to select other buttons on this page to create. So I'm going to click the Submit button. I don't really love the way that looks, but that's okay because I actually created some other styles that I can use. So I'm going to copy and paste that from another area. I've saved it. Go to Advanced Item Options and paste that in here. And, ah, let me actually get make sure I've got the whole thing. Yeah, that'll help, won't it? Yeah, so now you can see I've actually got this button here. I'm going to change the text to say something a little more specific, like read chat. This is where I'll place the button text, and I can call this read chat demo build. And so now, whenever I click this button, it's going to trigger this workflow. Any bricks I add after this are going to happen. So first of all, I actually want to extract some info from the page. So I'm going to type extract from page, and I want to get data from the chat. So for instance, I want to get the name, right? I'm going to want to see who is the name in my chat here. So I can click this icon, and just like when I was making a button, it selects different element on elements on the page. So I'm going to click that right there. It's going to go ahead and grab Pixie Brit, um, which is the primary header that I want there. And so let's just test this out when I click the button you can see now in my output panel on the page editor I've clicked that button it's run this brick extracted from page it's got the name so that's great if I want to get the chat too I could add another property and let's just say I want to do first chat I actually had to play around with this a little bit to find the first chat message so depending on how comfortable you are with CSS you may need to play with that some but notice once again we can do that and so now we can access this information anywhere else we want in the page. So for instance, let's say I want to set this customer field with that name. Let's go ahead and click this set input value. Click that. And I just now need to say, what do I want to set? Once again, you're probably familiar with this by now. You can use this to make a selector, or you can manually type in what you want here. This properly identified customer number two, gave it an ID. That's going to work pretty well. Now I want to set it with that name from over here. All I need to do is click that copy button next to the path in output, copy that, paste that, and now let's read the chat and you see, once again, it extracted the data and set the field. But now what we wanna do is we actually wanna pull up a sidebar that will run our RE widget. So let's click this. We're gonna use display temporary information. This is basically, it's gonna open a sidebar panel. It comes with a render document brick if you wanna style any text or anything with that. We really just want the RE widget iframe, so we're just gonna get rid of that brick and we're gonna click here, this plus button, and we're going to search for iframe. Click add, and that is where I'm gonna paste my URL here. This is your control room, whatever you need to pass here. And notice at the very end of this, um, I'm able to pass information to it. I can pass that username here. It's actually data here. Uh, let, me, let me correct that. Put that value in here. But if we want to reference a variable, we just have to wrap it in these brackets. So that way, um, the text templating language is able to accept that. And so now, so now let's click this button. It's going to extract the information, put it in here, and it's going to automatically populate our widget over here. Already preset it with a customer name. All right, and now we see these are the displayed orders here. So now I can see these orders. It's a great way to quickly compare and see what I've got. I'm good to go. I can now go ahead and process this refund and make sure I figured out what I need. If you need any help building something like this, join the Slack community, comment on this video, reach out and let me know. We're happy to help. Happy Pixie Bricksing!